Watch me morph into my true human form. Are you ready? I am a cat tree. I need to put a trigger warning on this video if talks of death or pet death or loss of any nature triggers you in any way, shape, or form. Please don't watch this video. It is not my intent to make anyone upset by this topic. It is fairly lighthearted. We're not talking about too many graphic things, but you know, it is still at the end of the day, we're talking about death and pet death. So if that is triggering, that's fine. I'll see you in the next video. If not, um, come forth. Let us talk about sadness and grief. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is today, uh, mm, all right, let's already back up. Today I wanted to talk about something that I get asked about all the time. And that's not the adoption question, which how do you let them go? Which is a different question we can answer in a different day. I wanted to talk about, <laughs> you're cute. I wanted to talk a little bit about the grief that can come with fostering. And what do you do when you lose a kitten? So a little backtrack, because there's really like, there's two sides of the equation. There's a logical, like, it's a lesson. You can learn more to save the next one. And then there's like the human emotion side where it just messes with your brain. So let's just talk about it, shall we? Hello. Ela, say hi. Thank you. So after the screamies on Friday night, I came downstairs immediately to feed Little Miss Concrete because it was time. That's how bottle feeding works. It, it was time. And I went down and she wasn't like, she wasn't interested in eating, which was odd for her. She usually, the second that I put the, put the bottle near her, she's like, oh, food, and she would eat. So I didn't think too, too much of it because, you know, sometimes they have an odd feeding, like truly they have an odd feeding. And I was like, you know what? It's fine, sometimes we're just not hungry. Sometimes we just don't want food, you know what I mean? And so I put her back, I went to bed, and I came down at, came down for the middle of the night feeding, and she still wasn't eating, and I was like, okay, that's not flying in this house. Generally speaking, I will let foster kittens, bottle babies, skip one meal. Like if they're not hungry, that can happen. Like they're just not interested in one meal. I'll let them skip one. But by the second meal, if they're not eating, I will go ahead and tube feed them. Especially someone like Concrete who is a bit small and who can't really go with missing meals. So in the middle of the night feeding, I pulled out the tube, the tube feeding supplies, and I went on ahead and tube feed her. She was still like, it was still like an odd feeding, even if it was tube feeding, but it was the middle of the night. I tube fed her. I was like, okay, you know what? We'll see how you are in the morning and then we'll go from there. And I came back down in the morning and she had passed. Um, and if you follow me on my super secret doesn't exist TikTok account, then you'll know that I posted some emotional screaming to Shania Twain because this one hit differently. And I don't mean to say that when I lose a kitten or when a kitten passes that it's not all like some are more sad than others that's not true they're all sad in their own way and they're all you know equally as devastating but the difference between someone like concrete and someone like pistachio who came in a few weeks ago who you know by the time that that he came in i was like oh this one's gonna be tough you almost like <laughs> Ela's trying to do a muscle up on the tripod. You almost like pre-grieve the kittens in your care. So someone like Pistachio who comes in, who is very sick and likely not gonna make it, the odds are not in their favor. You know, you fight like the odds are in their favor, but you also understand that this one might not make it. You've already grieved for the fact that the kitten has gotten to this state. You're already super sad because of that. So when they do inevitably pass, it it's not as like shocking. It's not as like intense because you kind of could see the writing on the wall, even though you fought like hell to not let that happen. But concrete is different. One's like concrete where nothing seems to be wrong and then all of a sudden it's over. Those are the ones that that really get to me. Those are the ones where I stay up at night thinking, did I tube feed her wrong? Was there a different sign I didn't look out for? Was she always like this and I just didn't notice? You know, she was following all the normal signs. She was eating regularly, she was gaining weight, and she was peeping and pooing like a queen. Best poops. She had the best poops I've ever seen of a little baby like that. And so you just, so when it comes to losing a foster kitten, 
at least for myself, and I only speak from my experience because you know what? Sadness is a human emotion and everyone experiences sadness and grief in their own way. Some people want to lock themselves in their room and cry and that's great. Some people want to go do art projects. We like that, Picasso. Some people like to go hang out with their pets. Like how you handle grief is how you handle grief. Normally for me, when I when it's a kitten that we've gotten in and, and like they're slowly getting worse or they've gotten worse over the time that we've got them. The pre-grieving is a lot easier for me. They like the smell of my deodorant and it drives this one nuts. This is little Cleo, she's losing her mind. Um, <laughs> but I can angle this down better. There, you're welcome. Uh, I totally forgot where I was. I usually handle that well because I just get mad. I just get mad that the kitten ended up in this state that despite the best efforts, despite the best that we could absolutely give them, especially in this area, the kitten didn't make it. And that, those are the ones that I just get mad at. Ones like concrete where they were fine and it was like, like I opened the incubator and they're no longer there. Those are the ones that like, I just, I just break down and cry <laughs> and it sucks. <laughs> that one was really hard because there, there was no time to pre-grieve. There was no time to blame the universe. It was just like, oh, well shit. And so, not gonna lie, I had a really good thought for this video and it's not like panning out. Maybe this is just like therapy, like maybe we can talk about it. We can just talk about it. I think like, you know, the, the, the leader in me, the person who guides fosters on a daily basis, who gives us advice all the time. I tell everyone when they, you know, if they, if they go through a loss of a foster kid, I try to tell them all the same thing. Like you did everything that you knew you could do because listen, Beginner me, beginner me did not know much. Beginner me, I am shocked that I was able to keep any kittens alive because you just don't know what you don't know. And the only way that you learn a lot of these things is either through exposure, through seeing it through like TikTok or YouTube, which I, that's why I love sharing these things because it can light a fuse in your brain. Be like, oh, maybe she said something. I know it's happened to me all the time when kitten lady will mention something and I'll think, oh my gosh, this seems like when she went through this and I can't tell you how many kittens that she's helped me save because I just knew what to look out for. But you know, beginner Mary had no clue what she was doing, okay? You learn by trial and fire, you know? And I, I try to tell fosters when they come on, like, you know, you did everything that you know that you could do. The only thing you can really do is, of course, be sad and grieve and, and work through that in the way that you know how. But learn something from this experience so you can take those skills and apply them to the next kitten. I hope I don't portray that, I'm sorry. That was your face. I don't ever mean to portray that I'm perfect because I am absolutely not perfect. I have made grave errors in the kitten fostering world. And I don't mean that in a funny way. I mean like something I did was the result of a kitten passing. And those are really hard ones to, to get through because like you know that it is like 99% what you did or did not do that, that led to that kitten not making it. But I don't think we need to be villainizing people for making mistakes. Do I feel, I feel like a lot of the times people can, they think this is just, oh, this is just my opinion my opinion. A lot of the times we think that rescuers and fosters are superheroes and while they are in their own respects, they're also not trained medical professionals. And a lot of the times in order to save money, we hold off on medical care, which I understand. Like I understand the money aspect of everything, but you know, that is one thing that I learned um, being part of the foster world down here is a lot of the times medical care is put off because of the cost. And when I was fostering for someone else, that happened quite frequently. And I felt like I was losing kittens every single week. And that was really hard. You know, once I started doing it on my own and I got a good relationship with the vet and, and all that stuff, like I'm no longer afraid to bring kittens in for medical care. I know it won't break the bank. Will it be expensive? Yeah, but I know that we have enough that we can handle it and also that kitten's gonna get the best absolute best care they can as fast as they can if I feel like it's out of my skill set and I wish I had a very elegant way of saying like you just kind of get through it and as long as you know and you are 100% certain that you did everything that you knew how to do or could do then you have to just take the lessons and move forward. Even if that lesson is, I needed to bring them to the vet a few hours sooner. I needed to 
get them to the vet yesterday. Uh, they needed to get dewormed sooner. You know, the reason that we have protocols put in place the way that we do is usually because something happened that made me change how we do because let me show you what I do. It makes me change what I, or how we do things because of either we lost the kitten or someone got really sick and we didn't know how to handle it or we just got, hey cutie, you just got better and improved. But mm, I hope all that makes sense. Like I hope, I'm, I'm hope, I'm hoping you're distracted enough by kittens that we can talk a little bit about sadness and a little bit about grief. You wanna show them your cute face? Not very good about talking about these things. Emoting is not my forte. <laughs> it's not my thing. I think the advice that I could give, because like I said, everyone handles emotions differently. You need to go cry it out in the corner, you go cry it out in the corner. You need to go driving and turn your music up, turn your music up. You need to talk to someone, talk to someone. But I think at the end of the day, if you are someone who is fostering animals and you know, death does happen, death can happen in your care, be able to parse apart your worth and what happened. You know, if I put my worth on on being perfect and never making a mistake and having a 100% success rate, I would be worthless. Are you pooping? Cricket is a poop talker. She likes to have conversations. Cricket is the type of girl who will sit next to you in the bathroom stall and she will have a full-blown conversation about your day. And we love that for her. We're pooping. Those are some good poops. Wow. And of course, I totally forgot where we were. Yeah, if I put my worth in my success rate, especially in the first few years, I would, I would not have continued fostering. But you learn. You grow, you adapt, and you will be able to save so many more animals because of the lessons you learn from one. Yeah, that's it. I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Eaton. Little babies. Oh, Ela.